One of the most basic instincts for us as human beings is to reach out to the sick, to try and bring them comfort, to try and help them. I suspect this may stem from our childhood when our own parents cared for us during times of illness and, even if they could not cure us, at least reminded us that we were not abandoned and alone when we felt awful. In human history, however, there is another side to illness, and that is the fear that it raises in the healthy. Some infectious diseases are so scary that even well-meaning people fear to get close enough to care for these sick people. Think of lepers at the time of Jesus, or today, those who are HIV positive, or not so long ago, the SARS virus that hit Toronto. Indeed, the fears of a pandemic, a flu epidemic, have been prominent in the media since SARS and the bird flu. Even where diseases are not contagious, however, one can find many people who are very uncomfortable around illness. Cancer patients often find that their friends are nowhere to be found. And the elderly, the shut-ins, and those with chronic illnesses that keep them at home often tell stories of great loneliness because nobody has time for them. Hence, the attraction to care for the sick is often conflicted by the fear of the sick. And that is where the encouragement of Jesus is so important to us who become the very body of Christ by virtue of our baptism and our consuming the body of Christ in the Eucharist. In his ministry, he instinctively recognized the loneliness, the fear, the stigma, and the shame of illness for lepers, for women, for parents, for the possessed and the crippled. He reached out to them. How often does he touch the one in need of healing? And how often is he ready to go to the home of a synagogue official or a centurion or Mary and Martha to reach out to the suffering? How often does he speak words of comfort and compassion to those who are shunned by others? Jesus never lets fear of any disease or any social stigma against the sick or any class division keep him from bringing his love and healing to those in need. Whether a demoniac among the tombs or a leper kneeling before him or a Syrophoenician woman, Jesus looks for faith and then says, go in peace, your faith has made you whole. We are now called to be the heart and the hands of Jesus today, to be the body of Christ reaching out to touch those in need of healing. And please do not get lost on the miracles of Jesus. If we begin to complain that we can't perform miracles, then we have already missed the very meaning of Jesus' compassion. You see, healing takes place in many, many ways. And if you or I are looking for the physical healing so often mentioned in the Gospels, we will miss the very healing that we are called to bring as the body of Christ. Let me give you three examples of this healing. First, the one who is ill is, as I said, often lonely and feeling like a pariah. To visit them, to share some time with them, to bring a gentle touch and a bit of concern is to let them know that they are still human, still worth God's while and worth our while, that they are still connected. Second, never overlook the importance of being part of a community. Hence, when you or I visit someone who is ill or in the hospital, we are reminding them that their illness does not exclude them from the human race. On the contrary, those who are ill teach us that any of us could be weak, overwhelmed by illness, fragile, and frightened. A visit is in itself, and provided we're not imposing on a person who, for example, needs quiet, a visit in itself is a simple reminder that one is not less human because one is sick. The fear that keeps people away from those with an illness makes the sick feel like they do not belong anymore, and that is simply not acceptable for those who are the body of Christ. Third, when people's spirits heal, then their bodies and their minds heal as well. We all know this. When somebody cheers us up, we feel better. When somebody visits, 
deep down we know that we are valued and that others care about us, even when we feel awful. And that is a healing that sometimes is a beginning. You don't have to be a doctor or a nurse to help people feel better. You just have to have a bit of compassion or empathy. And then, remember the saying in the parable, when you visited the sick, you visited me. But even more than that, you will discover that you are somehow being the Christ as a visitor, while you also somehow recognize Christ in the sick. And I believe, very simply, that the bedside of the sick and the dying is one of the places where we most readily recognized Christ. We just have to pay attention.